everyone. My name is Ann Zilke. I'm the training coordinator for Wisconsin Facets. I'm joined today by Sean Koval and Dr. Ryan Collar. We're excited to introduce, or for some folks, reintroduce a wonderful resource, the Reset Toolkit. Thank you all for watching today, and thank you both so much for being with us. So could you first both um, take a moment to introduce yourselves? I can go first. I'm um, Ryan Collar, as Ann mentioned. Thank you so much for the invitation to be here. We're, we're really thrilled. Um, I'm a pediatrician at the University of Wisconsin, UW Health Kids, American Family Children's Hospital. And my work here is really primarily focused on taking care of children who are in the hospital or children who are in our complex care program. And uh, it's really an honor to be able to uh, to work with the um, patients and their families, um, both you know, in the clinical setting as well as in um, more of a research setting. And uh, some of my work is focused on trying to help support caregiving at home and try to um, really uh, improve kind of the seamlessness of care between uh, home and community and um, healthcare settings. And my big goal is to try to help children with medical complexity avoid the hospital. So um, it's been a pleasure to work on this work with uh, many partners and uh, to speak um, on behalf of uh, others on the team who uh, are equally deserving to be here. But um, with that in mind, it's a good uh, pitch over to Sean. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, and hello, everyone. I'm Sean Koval. I'm the Healthy Schools Coordinator here at the Healthy Kids Collaborative. Um, we are based at UW Health and the Office of Population Health and often collaborate um, with both community organizations, school districts, and uh and health systems partners um, to make sure that every child from every neighborhood here in Dane County has the opportunity to be healthy. Um, I was really, um, in my role, I should say that I particularly am focused on improving relationships um, with school stakeholders and, uh, and school districts here locally, um, trying to make sure that they're healthy environments for all. And I've been lucky to, um, uh, collaborate with uh, Dr. Collar's team and the Department of Pediatrics on a variety of projects over um, the years. And um, I was blessed uh, to be um, asked to be the uh, dissemination coordinator for the RESET project for uh, our community facing work. Fantastic. Thank you so much for both of you for being here today and sharing your expertise expertise with us. Um, could you both, um, or either one of you, give you a, give us a quick introduction of the publication? What exactly is the Reset Toolkit? Sure. So I'll start and welcome Sean to jump in as well. Um, um, if you haven't heard of Reset before, uh, Reset is an acronym that stands for Restarting Safe Education and Testing for Children with Medical Complexity. And it started with funding from the National Institutes of Health through their RADxUP program. Uh, which is a national initiative. Um, our focus was a part of a group of projects around the country that were really aimed at trying to help children uh, return to school early in the pandemic. So our work uh, kind of began really early in the pandemic and has evolved to, to where it is today with this toolkit. Um, initially, we focused a lot around understanding what was happening in schools and trying to provide recommendations to um, schools and families and clinicians to really um, make it as uh, safe and um, stress-free and productive of an experience as possible to try to be back in the school setting if that was the right environment for the child and their family. So all, all throughout the, the time that we've been working on this, we've been trying to develop materials to advance that. Um, and we also had work that was focused on understanding um, testing um, for children. And, uh, and that was primarily focused on in-home testing. Um, what uh, the toolkit has really focused on is, I think, a culmination of much of that work, and um, we timed it really to focus on starting this next school year. And, and what we wanted to do is help families um, have um, really all of the current state information and benefit from what we've been learning over the last couple of years to jumpstart this academic year. and. Um, and really think about not only COVID, but really start to think about other viruses that impact children in many of the same ways that COVID has, uh, things like influenza, RSV, um, and plenty of others. And so 
The toolkit, um, I think, really is rooted in COVID, but I think many people will find that it's applicable to just safety from infectious and respiratory illnesses that are in school and that come part and parcel with being um, in the school setting. And so uh, the Reset Toolkit brings together um, a variety of resources. One of them is what we call um, key priorities. And, and uh, we can talk a little bit about the background, but kind of the big picture is it's a one page summary of what we think are really key priorities and principles. So what happens uh, for prevention, uh, what should happen for preparation, what should happen for partnership and adapt adaptation um, throughout the year. So these are um, pieces of advice that um, we and our partners have come together to, to develop and, and offer. So there's a document that summarizes that. We also have um, uh, a set of recommendations for school personnel, um, recommendations to help um, maintain health, to help um, with communication with families about what's happening as things are changing over time and then also supporting connections. We have a set of resources for, um, for schools also that are examples from best practices, in our opinion, from folks around the state who've um, really done a lot of these things well. So for example, we've got uh, an example communication that a school district has used for families to help keep them um, apprised of what's happening in the school in terms of numbers of cases of illnesses that are circulating in the school and what they're doing about those things, what they're doing with masking, things like that, and, um, and some other tools to make tracking some of these things easier at the school level. And then um, one of the other um, important pieces of material that I think is one of the, the um, most um, uh, valuable things that's been put together through um, work with our partners is a family Q&A. So this is a question and answers document that I think has very high yield questions that might be on your mind, as well as some very easy to read, common sense, well-resourced um, answers to them. And there's hyperlinks in there to click to, to other sources of information as well. And those all map back to those priorities that we talked about for, for keeping kids safe. Um, I want to also mention it's available in English and in Spanish. It's on our website, reset for the number four kids.org. Uh, um, and uh, we're happy to, to make this available for folks uh, as much as possible. It's freely available and, and can be shared with anyone at any point. Um, and Sean, uh, please add anything to that that I missed. Well, yeah, I'm happy to share sort of how the publication came about and maybe why it was initially developed. Um, so, yeah, as Dr. Collar mentioned, we um, one of the main uh, documents of the toolkit as it stands now is guidance for schools to think about what are what can they do to make sure that their environments um, are supporting the health of children with complex health needs. This is one of several documents of the toolkit. And it's sort of the origin document, I would say, of the toolkit, because uh, the start of, of us creating that document goes back um, to over two years ago in the spring of 2021, when the project was uh, had just been funded by the National Institutes of Health and we were just getting off the ground. Um, one of our year one uh, project goals was to create a set of uh, consensus priorities for schools. Um, for how they could keep children with complex health needs safe while the pandemic was still happening. Many schools and many families were very eager for resources, guidance, best practices to make sure that they could feel confident that their child could come in uh, to school in person, uh, especially this population where they may be receiving um, supportive services that are really hard to, um, to transmit or to experience virtually. So, we actually convened uh, uh, stakeholders across the the state uh, virtually. Um, you know, health providers, school leaders, school nurses, families, um, et cetera. And uh, this was our expert consensus stakeholder group, and that group helped um, sift through a lot of different, uh, uh, several hundred different ideas that were submitted to us uh, from our network networks across the state and schools across the state in terms of what is working to keep your child healthy in school. And we looked at those community suggestions and weighed the scientific data around um, COVID mitigation and respiratory illness mitigation and uh, initially issued 
um, those uh, uh, those uh, priorities in 2021. And those uh, priorities got a really great response. And that was the beginning of our journey at Reset of, ad of adding and creating resources based on community input and uh, and uh, stakeholder um, stakeholders express needs around what do these uh, populations, what do schools um, need to uh, need to know, or what supports might they benefit from, um, in order to really ensure that the uh, these families felt comfortable um, and confident sending their child to school in person. So it really so the toolkit really um, includes uh, updated versions of many documents that we've created over the course of the last two years and, and several months. And uh, and over time, as Dr. Collar was mentioning, um, we've shifted some of the um, documents in the toolkit from being really COVID specific to broadening them out to include other respiratory illnesses, which are endemic, which are part of, uh, which are circulating in any particular viral season. So things like flu um, and RSV. And so, um, so we, we're really um, hopeful that uh, the update, these updated resources um, presented in a new way through the toolkit um, will help people this school year, the 2023-24 school year and beyond to bring awareness and bring support um, to children with complex health needs to make sure that if, you know, even in viral seasons, um, even in the, in the hardest of situations, that we can do all we can together as school communities um, to make sure that these children uh, can attend school um, safely and, and and know that their um, their health will be uh, supported uh, getting the critical educational services that they need and deserve. Thank you both so much. You've done a, such a great job of explaining that and answering pretty much almost all of the questions that I had, but from a parent's perspective, um, I want you both to know that this is actually a toolkit. This is something that I use myself and something that I have found extremely helpful for my family and our situation throughout the pandemic. So I want to thank you both um, for that from, you know, from the bottom of my heart. Um, Dr. Thank Collar, you. would you be able to take a moment to talk about um, how the Reset Toolkit benefits students with complex health needs? Sure. I think... Um... Uh, first of all, thank you, and for your kind comments and um, support for the work that that we've been doing. I um, I think that the toolkit, uh, you know, I've used it uh, in clinic. I've pulled it up and shared it with families, and I think uh, it's got a lot of direct relevance um, for individuals. Um, and a, a few different things can be sort of good examples of that. So um, one piece of our tools that are on our website is a family decision tool, which allows a family to think about their goals for their child attending school, their specific concerns, and then come up with action steps that that sort of link their goals, their concerns, and um, help them put together some um, ideas for how to communicate with their school, thinking about what are maybe important things to emphasize during an IEP meeting or to talk with the child's specific teacher. Um, and, and we've got a lot of material in that decision tool to help you think so it's not just a blank slate asking you to come up with all the ideas. There's actually a lot of um, things that you can sort of look at what other people have done, get some ideas, maybe get some inspiration. And so um, that's something that you can access freely. It, it can generate a um, document that you can email to yourself or you can just print it or you can print it out and write it by hand. So the family decision tool, I think, is a really useful tool that I've uh, used in, in clinic with my patients and families uh, to help them. Um, the other thing is, um, I think this, uh, some of the material can really help you understand navigating some IEP conversations. I think people may not really immediately think about respiratory illnesses and staying safe from an infectious standpoint as a part of the IEP conversation or as part of some of the adaptations and modifications of the typical school day that might be really pertinent to them. And so I think there's a lot of great um, content in the Q&A doc, as well as in some of the materials we've written for schools that can, um, again, help to um, give people ideas for, for um, what types of conversations are okay to have and in fact should have, and if they aren't going the right way, some ideas for where to go next um, to, to advocate for yourself and for your child. Um, and then I think there's just some really uh, quick, easy ways to access through these tools, 
national recommendations, whether it's from the American Academy of Pediatrics or the CDC. And uh, there's so much material that comes out in the news and a lot of changes that are happening. And so um, we've tried to make this as much as possible a channel through which you can get connected to the most up-to-date information. Um, that's hard for all of us because things are changing fast for all of us, but that's uh, one thing that we really hope uh, is helpful through these materials. Thanks so much. So thank you both so much for taking time to sit down with me today and discuss this important publication. I know the Reset Toolkit has made a real impact on the lives of children and families with disabilities and complex health needs. Again, I know it has made an impact on my individual family's journey. Um, thank you again both for being here. Do either of you have any sort of parting thoughts for us? Yes, Anne, and thank you for having us. Um, I would just say that we're still eager to hear um, from people uh, if they're finding the toolkit useful, how they are using it, if they have any feedback on how we might um, enhance particular resources or if there are needs to, to add any anything in addition. Um, so I would just encourage uh, uh, folks to visit our website and click on the contact us or feedback buttons on the website to share more information with us about how this toolkit is, um, how you are using it and how it's um, you know, being useful um, in your day-to-day -day, uh, lives as, as you support children with complex health needs in whatever capacity that uh, you might. I couldn't agree more. We wanna hear from you and um, really appreciate the opportunity to, to join you, Anne, and, and um, be a part of this conversation. Awesome. And from um, our organization, from FACETS, for anybody who's watching, if you have questions about how this connects to your own child's um, special education journey or their IEP with complex health needs, please reach out to Wisconsin FACETS and we can hopefully walk you through that or get you to the right place um, to get answers to those questions. That's incredibly important to us for everybody to know that we, we are here to help. Um, so again, thank you both so much for being with us today. Thank you everybody for watching. I hope everybody has a great rest of your day. Thank you both.